Hey, woodworkers. So I've got hopefully a creative solution for uh, what is always a bit of a challenge when we make things with funky angles or more specifically difficult shapes. So I have uh, a section here of where this joint needs to go. And what I want to do is start with the actual piece. So I've, I've made this bend and I've drawn out the bend on this piece of, uh, this is melamine, as long as it's rigid, it's all that matters. It could be plywood, could be MDF, could, but I like melamine just because I can see things a little bit better. So what I'm uh, proposing to do with this is I'll need to find the alignment of this piece coming in here. I need to create joinery from here to here, but matching it perfectly. What I'm about to show works on a compound angle, works on funky angles, it works convex versus concave. It really doesn't matter once you understand the process here. Uh, okay, so what I've done is uh, drawn this thing out full size, as I said. I'm no longer really worried or interested in my full size drawings. This is the part that is going to set the next stage into place. So uh, I need to two things. I've cut a template piece the same width as the actual piece of wood that I'm going to be making. So this is going to be the part that I'm going to use to transfer to the actual piece. What I need to do now is line this up with the edges and then I'm going to lay this thing down in such a way that these little marks line up with uh, the bottom edge and the top edge, and um, I'm able to make this curve like so. So hopefully that makes sense. What I want to do now is take to this, take this to the bandsaw and cut it close. I don't care how accurate it is, but I just want to get it close. So let me do that. I'll be right back. Enjoy the view of my fantastic drawing in the meantime. So depending on the complexity of the curve, I could cut this pretty well or pretty accurate with respect to the final shape. But pretty good is not my favorite. Um, I prefer accuracy and I think you all are watching this because you do as well. So, all right. I want to clamp this down onto the melamine because I don't want this to move or shift for the next steps. Alright, so that's in there. I'm still looking at my line, which is great. Oops. Stretch on the line. Yeah, alright, so pretty close is still, I've got a huge gap over there where I can't afford to have it. So, alright, so that's perfect. What I've done on these areas is I've laid down some tape there and there, and that's important. Uh, the next step is I'm going to be using a little bit of petroleum jelly here just to create a bit more of a release for the next step. All right, I don't wanna get crazy with this stuff, but having a nice thin coat is all I need. All right. So in the meantime, while that's setting up, I don't know why you're so horribly out of focus. All right, next up is that I need to mix some Bondo. And this Bondo trick really has no limit, no ends. Once you start to understand its potential for woodworking and for matching shapes or matching contours, it's 
pretty fantastic. That's about five times more than I need, but you know, why be frugal now? All right, so if you've never used Fondo or automotive body filler, you have the material here and then you have the catalyst or the hardener. And this stuff comes in different colors, but they all do the same thing. And Bondo is just one brand name. Uh, this hardener mix, or it settles, pardon me. So I'm just trying to remix it before I start slopping this stuff around everywhere. I did an earlier video talking about how much of this goes to uh, the hardener to the, the Bondo. And the correct answer is about that much. <laughs> I, um, if you use too much hardener, the stuff just starts to set too fast. If it's too little, then it takes longer to cure. Um, ultimately, once you start using one specific hardener and whatever the, the base material here is of the body filler, you'll start to recognize this a little bit more succinctly by color as, bar, as being too much or too little. And you, you kind of just get a sense of it. Uh, if this is one of your first times with this product, I would recommend less is more and go light on how much of that hardener you choose to use. All right, but hopefully from this video, you can see the batch we just mixed versus the ones that I've made in the past. It's a fairly similar tone. Um, if it were a bit more intense pink or red, then I know that this is going to kick or set up much faster than I really want. All right, so that looks well mixed. Okay, so now taking the end of the piece that we just cut on the bandsaw, which again is close, didn't care about how well this stuff looks, I want to distribute this onto the MDF. The thing that's nice about Bondo is it sticks to just about everything except for petroleum jelly. So without any other priming agents or anything there, I can get this stuff dialed in. Uh, and I want to be fairly generous with this because I really don't want, nor can I afford any gaps. Sorry, I realized that was probably too close for you. All right. Lovely. All right, so we're back to this business. Hopefully this helps. So tape Vaseline again. I'm lining up the edges of this stuff. I'm going to compress this until I start to see squeeze out everywhere. And I don't want to modify or shift the orientation of this. And that looks pretty great. Okay, so good squeeze out. I'm in in line with my layout lines, except for when I bumped it just there. This extra layer here is going to do me no good, so I want to scrape this stuff off. I don't want to get too crazy with making it clean. I just want to scrape off the excess. I'm going to hang on to this piece, and uh, that's going to be my litmus test to know when I'm fully cured or not. So... This is the, uh, the big waiting game that we're in. Uh, I'm gonna let this set, and then once that's set, then I'll show you the next stages for transferring this to the other piece. What I will do in the meantime, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll walk you through in the next step. So I'm just gonna hang on to this. It'll take about four to five minutes for this stuff to fully cure. Again, all depending on how much of that hardener you've made. Okay, talk to you in a minute.